Now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Now, let's take a look at something that's going to happen in the future. I personally believe, based on Scripture and just a long period of Bible study, that there's actually two appearings of the Lord that are separated by a particular time frame. One will be the gathering together for the believer, the ecclesia, the church, or the called out ones. That gathering together is 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. But there's also going to be another type of gathering together that's going to take place, and that's going to happen in Matthew 24, when, he, when the Lord comes back at the end of the tribulation, and the Bible says He gathers together his elect from the four corners of the earth. That means the north, the south, the east, and the west. And he gathers them together and brings them to Jerusalem. Now this idea in Matthew 24 of there being the four corners gathered together is actually a law of the Old Testament which was known as the law of gleaning. In other words, when you harvested the main field, you left the four corners of the field for the poor, the stranger, fatherless, and the widow to be able to collect grain. So Jesus uses this analogy of how that the men would harvest the field and leave the four corners and collect them at last at the end. Watch this, at the end of the harvest, when the harvest cycle was completed, you still had four corners. So you find that in the, the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 4, John hears a voice saying, come up hither, come up to the throne of God. I'm of the opinion, based on what you read in that verse, the voice, the voice of a trumpet saying, come up hither. If we take those three uh, statements there in Revelation chapter 4, 1 and 2, then we revert back to what Paul wrote about the Lord would descend from heaven with a shout, voice of the archangel and trump of God. The imagery of the rapture or the catching away of the, of the believer, or I like to call it the gathering together, is found in Revelation chapter 4, 1 through 2. Because you, you see it there in chapter 2 and 3, the church is mentioned. It is not mentioned after chapter, at the end of chapter 3 in the book of Revelation. Suddenly chapter 4, John says, uh, God is, John, John is told after these things, then he hears the voice. So my point is that there's going to be a catching away of the saints or a gathering together of the saints. That's totally in the New Testament. It is a revelation that was given to the apostle Paul after he became a believer, converted on the road to Damascus, and after after he uh, gave his heart to the Lord, God gave him the revelation of the catching away or the gathering together. Now follow me carefully. The saints of God will be in heaven for a period of time. Revelation 11, 18, they will be receiving rewards at what is called the Bema or the judgment. And then in somewhere in Revelation chapter 19, there will be what's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then in Revelation 19, at the conclusion of the marriage supper, the Lord comes back with what is called in Revelation 19, the armies of heaven. Now the armies of heaven, uh, you know, I don't know what we picture when we talk about the armies of heaven, but there are angels, but also saints who are returning with him. Because the book of Jude said, behold, the Lord is coming with 10,000s of his saints to execute judgment upon the earth. And we also know that the saints of God in Zechariah 14 come with Christ to the Mount of Olives where we will end up setting the kingdom up with him in the city of Jerusalem and ruling and reigning with him for a thousand years. So when that coming takes place, there is another regathering. And that regathering is the Jewish remnant that has been scattered throughout the earth. He will call them back to the city of Jerusalem, his, his chosen, his elect ones that have come through the tribulation period. We do know that if we read the Bible, there's a big Jewish remnant that is held out in the country of Jordan, in the area of Petra. That's where most Bible scholars believe that will take place. So this gathering together at the end of the tribulation, I'm going to make this clear in Matthew 24, is not the church as some people are now teaching on television because the church has already been caught up to meet the Lord in the air and we will be returning with the Lord to rule and reign on earth. He's coming with ten thousands of his saints, the Bible says. And so the church is not on earth going through the entire tribulation surviving barely and Jesus just goes ahead and resurrects the dead who are the church and then all of a sudden we rule and reign with Christ after he comes back with with angels that's how some people are teaching this it's really mixed up when you look at it that way because let me just tell you in Israel there's three harvest cycles now watch this let's say this is a big field where I'm standing the, first of all, you have what's called the first fruits, which is that which is ripened is taken first out of the field. 
that leaves the main field. Then you have the main harvest of the field. That's the second cycle. When the main harvest of the field is uh, harvested, you then have the four corners, which is called the gleaning of the field in the Bible. And that's what we see in Matthew 24, meaning that there's three removals on earth. First of all, there is a removing. We're talking about the gathering together code here. There is a removing of the called out ones, the overcoming ones, the church, and that's the universal church. If your name is written in the book of life, if your name is in the book of remembrance, the book of Malachi talks about this, then you are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and that is where you go into heaven. We are worshiping the Lord. We're at the Bema. We experience the marriage supper. So that represents the first order of harvest, first fruits. And then following that is the main harvest of the field. You see this throughout the tribulation as people are dying martyrs because they have accepted the Lord. You know, people that knew there was going to be a coming of the Lord and miss it, they're going to have to die in the tribulation period in order to make it, and they become the martyrs. You also have 144,000 Jews sealed with the seal of God in the book of Revelation, and they are then caught up in chapter 14 to heaven. So in other words, there's a harvesting of the main field. At the end of the tribulation, at year's end, comes the harvesting of the four corners of the field. That's called the gleaning of the field. That is chap Matthew chapter 24. In other words, when, when the Bible says, He shall send His angels to gather His elect from the four corners of the earth, this is not the rapture of the church at the end of the tribulation as some are teaching. And, you know, in order to make that fit, if we were to say or if I were to preach to you that in Matthew 24, at the end of the tribulation, Jesus is coming for the church and He gathers the church from the four corners. And some people say that it says there He gathers His elect and the elect has to be the church. Wait a minute, I can go to the Bible and I can show you that Israel is called God's elect. Christ is called God's elect. Angels are called, certain of them, elect angels. There is a Jewish elect and yes, there is an elect of the church. But to say Matthew 24 there is speaking only of the church is totally incorrect in the context of who Christ is speaking to and in the context of the prophecy itself. Those elect are those that God has chosen because remember he chose 144,000 and they're Jews sealing them with the seal of God. So there's a chosen group that God allows to survive the tribulation who will come to Jerusalem in earthly bodies to rule and reign with him during that time period he sets up his kingdom. Now. Having said that, don't miss this point, that in Matthew 24, there are people that try to say, we go through the entire part of the tribulation. In fact, I would be afraid to do what some people are doing. You know, you, if you watch Brother Stone, if you watch me for years, you know I try not to put any dates on anything unless it's a date that everybody knows about. But when it comes to saying, now two years from now, this is going to happen, and now we're already in the tribulation. Now, people are just going to mess their ministry up by getting on TV and predicting all these dates and saying this is going to happen and it's not happening. Because if you start predicting things and you start getting things out of order, you've got to make the entire book of Revelation out of order. Then pretty soon you are self-interpreting the scriptures away from the original intent, the context of how it was written, the chronological order of how it's written. And in the book of Revelation, you can't go over here and say this is here and jump here and jump back and jump here. It is a There is an order to the book of Revelation. And in that order, in chapter 11, which is mid-trib, the saints are already in heaven and they are being rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. In chapter 19, before Jesus comes back to rule and reign on earth, the saints are in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb does not happen on earth as some preachers are teaching because the Bible says that Jesus said, I will not drink this cup and eat this bread again till I eat it anew with you in the kingdom. And the kingdom he's talking about there is in the kingdom of heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the point I want to make, and I want to make this real clear, is there's a lot of confusion about the t teaching of the gathering together. I know every time on Manifest that I even say the word rapture, we get hundreds of emails. That word is not in the Bible. Why is Perry preaching something that's not true? And see, here's the problem that we're having. People will hear one thing, follow one teaching, and they'll get caught up on that one teaching, and they become so narrow that they don't look at this entirety of the Scripture. First of all, the coming of the Lord for the church, the picture of it is Exodus chapter 19, where the Lord came down, Moses went up, and there was a voice of a trumpet waxing loud and long. The revelation of the coming of the Lord did not come fully in the Old Testament 
I'm talking about for the church, number one, because the church didn't exist, and number two, God had to have a preacher by the name of Paul raised up as a minister to the Gentiles, and when the Gentiles were grafted into the covenant in Acts 10, you start seeing Paul preaching to the Gentiles, and what you end up with here, and I want to make this very clear, is Paul begins to receive the revelation of the coming of the Lord, or what we would call the catching away. Now, if you don't want to use the term rapture, use the term gathering together. That's what it is. You can use the term, the general assembly of the church of the firstborn. That's in the book of Hebrews 12. The episynagogue, the gathering together of all the saints together. There is in the Bible, however, a mystery. There's a mystery of the resurrection of the dead in Christ. How is it going to happen? How, how do you die and come back to life again? How does the spirit in heaven join the body? That's a mystery. And Paul also wants you to understand in his writings of the New Testament that this gathering together is somewhat of a mystery. I don't I claim to know everything. And I don't know that I ever will know everything that I want to know about certain subjects of the Bible, no matter how much I do study. But I do want to encourage you not to allow skeptics and doubters and people that are pulling this verse here and that one there out of context and out of chronological order. Don't let people discourage you into believing that the Lord is coming again. Because the picture is the ingathering of the fruit at the end of the harvest. And when the harvest is over, when the no full number of Gentiles has been reached, blindness and part has happened to Israel till the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. When the full number of Gentiles are reached, that the Lord's will would reach in the earth, that, that then the gospel is preached and the end comes in Matthew 24, chapter, verse 14. Then reading in Matthew 24, then you start seeing the abomination of desolation. You start seeing the cosmic signs and the tribulation period. So my encouragement for you today is keep looking for the return of the Lord. Keep living. Here's what you do. Plan like he may not come for 20 years, but live as though he could come tomorrow. That's the safest way to live on the planet right now. Um, I have a great teaching for you. And let me just say to you, we need your support to keep manifest on the air. And I'm not just saying that. I'm very serious when I share that with you. We can't do it without you. But watch this and I'll be right back in just a moment.